you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 4v4 ladder match here on the map Aeon the Sia. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting off with Team 1 here in the Northeast, also known as the Red Team. Ending with Team 2 in the Southwest, also known as Blue Team. Starting off with the Central Most player on Team 1 in Chevy Crimson. It is a friendly Mander. His name is the Code Mander on the scoreboard, but he is a friendly Mander going first line as a Cybran. He is a 1396 rating to his northwest in Ruby Red. We have Banana Smoothing going first land as a Seraphim, as a 1225 rated. To the east, we have the highest rated player on Team 1. And in the game overall, at 2001 rating, we have Trith. His name is Derp in the game. He is in Light Oak Tan going first land. And to his south east, we have in orange to color orange the Siren player of not Trith, but he is Derp. So that will confuse not only myself, but of course, possibly some of our viewers. Trith is Derp and Derp is Trith. So just try to remember that. He's going first land. This is Derp that I'm talking about. And again, he's a 1506 rated player. So for Team 1 side of the map, they have two Cyber and Sorry, one, yeah, two Cyber and two Seraphim, and no access to UEF or Aeon technology. Starting off with the southeasternmost player on Team 2, also known as Blue Team, in Stitch Blue is Hannibal O. Going first land, second air, he is a 1353-rated player to his northwest on his own little island. As well, he has House Boss Tech going first land as an Aeon, he is in... Royal Blue at a 14-12 rating. In Tropical Ocean Blue to the south, we have Hybrid going first. Land, he is also in UEF here first team. He is the highest rated player on Team 2 at a 17-15 rating. And to his northwest, sharing the island, it is Camp Camp Cakes 500 going first. Land, second air as another UEF here. First team in Amethyst Purple at 15-88 rating. So for Team 2 side of the map, they have three UEF and one Aeon, which means they do not have access to Cybran or Seraphim technology. So each team has exclusively their faction's tech. So Team 1, Cybran and Seraphim. Team 2, Aeon and UEF. Let's take a look at the reclaims currently still on the map here for a 20 by 20 map for a 4v4 ladder match, which means eight players... Starting off, we have almost 32,000 reclaim, which means it's 4,000 reclaim per player. That is a decent amount of mass for our players to scoop up. I wouldn't say decent. That is a heap of mass to scoop up. Let's take a look at the mass point layouts here for our players to scoop up. I'll probably, probably, cut, the game, probably cut the map diagonally. Actually, no, we'll probably cut it horizontally right here. We have a trimix position. I'd say this is a quad max position over here. Another quad max, another tri max. We have you know, a quad max in the middle, but that'll be fight over between both of the teams. And then a quad match with an additional max over there. So and a tri max. So for both team one and team two to grab, there is two tri mixes with at least a quad max in the middle. And comfortably on both sides of the map, each team has couple dual mexes, a trimex, a quad mex, and at least another quad mex to the edge of the map with, let's say, quad mex on each side of the map. So there's a decent amount of mass points to claim, as well as the fact there's a lot of it underneath the surface of the water. You have a lot of these one-offs just everywhere. So it'll be very much an expansionary game here for our players. They'd want to get out, gain as much territory as they can, and one player has already done so. It is Friendly Mander. Coming to claim the middle of the map for himself and for his team. There's a decent amount of mass in these crystalline, I think they're crystal structures. They look like, um, oh, what are they? Oh, they remind me of some like Lego or something like Lego crystal or something growing up. There's like these like oh, rock monsters or something. And anyway, there was like a theme for Lego. That's what they remind me of. Anyway, we see that Friendly Manor has claimed this position for his team. But he does have a, an enemy T2, not Team 2 engineer. Just going for a T1 mix. Albastek's going to get a T1 mix. Let's see if Friendly notices. But we do see a bomber over the top against Friendly Mander's position. Going after a couple of those T1 pigeons and a couple of engineers. Looks like he took out a mass extractor and at least one T1 or T2 T1 pigeons. 
which isn't too bad. Probably killed off a couple of M engineers as well. So just slowing down the expansion and the ecoing for Team One. We already see naval facilities have been started here for the player of friendly Mander. And as you can see, obviously there's a ton of water. It's a bunch of islands. We're gonna have a ton of navy here. Everyone in this game probably should have at least some form of navy, regardless if they're gonna be just the air slot player or not at least some sort of navy to assist even if it's just hey i built some facilities for you transfer them over at least something at a minimum we do see the calm of how bad tech getting pretty close to this middle island here we do see friendly manager just still just scooping up all of these little tiny crystalline pillar things each of them at 50 mass worth decent amount of mass looks like he's claimed Actually, no, this is his engineer uh, from how bass he's claimed this side. But essentially, it's about split in the middle of the map here between those two players. We do see some transports out in the east for Team Reds. Not yeah, It is derp. I'm going to have to read off of the scoreboard because there's no way by zoom in he's his triath that um, I'm going to be able to remember that. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's uh, not triath. He's derp. Definitely going to have to uh, just refer to the scoreboard for that. He's going to drop a... Transport with a couple of engineers. Are there any offensive units on board? No, just engineers. Which we'll see if that will bode well for him. We do see a couple of engineers dropped. And I've already claimed some T1 mexes here for Hannibalo. And then he will go for that T1 land facility. I also like the fact that all the structures are kind of glowing almost. We saw this down south that those structures that below we're building we're also glowing engineers immediately starting the reclaim process here but it's 4v2 team 2's Hannibalo is not going to win that and that will be a net positive here for team 1 Hannibalo already has facilities online pumping out some of those T1 frigates we already see some T1 frigates online here for derp as well so being very aggressive here on the eastern side here for derp and on the western side of things we see the Amazon's purple player of camp just taking off the in, just taking over the entire island, not even giving anything or letting anything fall into the hands of ha Banana Smoothie. Essentially the same thing happening in the east, but camp a little bit faster on the draw for that. We do see the first calm one come action here in the game at seven minutes. It's between How Bastek and Friendly Mander. We do see How Bastek forcing back the slightly weaker in terms of hit point commander of Friendly Mander. Uh, How Bastek has an additional thousand hit points more than he does which again isn't too bad you'll get a murder suicide situation but besides that it all depends on if the upgrades are there if the range is there versus the the gun in range versus the shield whatever the case may be we do see that team two is the victor for now as a nice little battle group of t1 frigates and subs start to line the coast and the I don't know, causeway or the the territory between these two little islands. I love these little kind of like spider-like or bug-like legs that these islands have. Make the map feel like it's uh, all connected together. They almost look like uh, germs with all the little legs on them. Kind of like the almost all the islands are interconnected is the uh, feeling that I get. We do see in the east frigates here from Team 2's Annabelle pushing back against the T1 facility that was destroyed that he was trying to build earlier and trying to get some revenge for that. But there is a T1 frigate getting free damage on these frigates, which means those frigates will die very, very quickly. They could easily turn and fire on that frigate from Team 1 and then go back to their duties. But they're focused on that facility, so they will not live as long as they probably could have. But there are some... Tiger Sharks, some T1 subs outbound to assist with that push as well. And we do see that group of units here from the Code Mander or the Friendly Mander, depending on if you use the name in the scoreboard or not. Trying to just play, you know, back and forth or not necessarily chicken, but essentially chicken with this fleet outbound from Hal Bastek. He wants this territory secured. His calm isn't even on the island. No one, sorry, no, no one has claimed the mexes in the middle of the map because they've just been destroyed or they don't want to put that investment in and then have them be destroyed, so I don't blame them in that regard. That frigate uh, is going to be taken up by some sh sh tiger sharks, and that frigate over here to the east and hanging on the eastern edge as well. Team 1's derp just, you know, wants to claim this island but doesn't want to go too far. 
Because the further he goes into Team 2's territory, the harder it is to hold and, you know, claim and hold. Because there's one thing to just take out a bunch of mexes and then leave. There's another thing to take, you know, take out a bunch of mexes and then stay there. We do see it's just mainly raiding going on here between between Derp and Hannibal Below. Hannibal Below kind of getting the short end of the stick here. Multiple engineers and mechs is being taken out. I mean, every T2 mechs, this one's actually upgrading the T3, sorry, T2. That 99%, all that engineer has to do is assist just for a brief second, and that mechs is T2. But that frigate not going to engage. Unfortunately, that mechs will be taken out at 99%. Definitely, it's got to hurt. So close, all that mass and energy wasted for that upgrade. It wasn't even able to get to T2, but we do see T2 Navy online here for Halbastic in the middle of the map. We do see a nice, lonely little frigate online here for Team 1's Banana Smoothie, getting some nice little, just picturesque environment, getting some vision on what's going on the side of the map for, you know, that team. But uh, there are some frigates and a nice little sub that will take out that frigate very, very quickly. Team 2, Santa Below is starting to be surrounded on this island here. He's trying to use his comm offensively. And unfortunately here, the only comm in the game that can realistically fight back in a conventional way or semi-conventional way would be the Sirens with their torpedo chest that they can build. Very similar to the laser, except it fires a torpedo. The UEF comms, they can go for the tactical missile slash Billy Nuke. The Seraphim can do the exact same, just except it's a tactical missile. Only... I don't think the Aeon have a way to fight in the water with their comms. I don't know if the stun works underwater. That'd be very interesting to get that chrono dampener where it's like a ring and it stuns you. And that's someone would be interested to see if that works on Navy. I know obviously it works on land, but I don't know if it works on Navy. We do see fleet starting to engage one another. T2 destroyer online here for the friendly Amanda trying to bolster his forces here. And the comm of Hannibal. I don't know if he's going to start to reclaim, but that could be an interesting scenario. Bowman needs to get some T2, T3 engineering suite to assist in that. But he is trying to chase down that fleet. And that fleet from Mander just kind of running away. Not running away, but constantly moving. Kind of just not allowing anybody to really get any sort of lock on their position. T2, Tort Bomber is outbound with Team 1, Strife. Providing air coverage and air superiority for the time being with a couple of ASFs. And that bomber goes, no, 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 I'm good. Whatever's down, whatever's over there, I'm sorry guys, I'm not gonna be able to assist you. And it does look like Hannibal is taking a ton of damage from these T1 subs and the Torp bomb Torps from the Salem class. Hannibal has to walk back into the, onto the, not into, but onto the island, wow, that he was on. The one hydrocarbon gonna take out, that's 100 energy per second, he's not gonna get back for a while. We do see some bombers going after some frigates. We'll kill off that last frigate down there. But Team 1 doing a great job and pushing in both on the eastern and the western side. The middle is hit or miss, but they're doing a great job at least forcing back Hannibal at a minimum. He's dropped into the red. And unfortunately here for Team 2, it's either Hannibal dies and everything gets gifted over to that would be probably hybrid. Or Hannibal stays alive, except you know he's kind of not muted but he can't really do a whole lot with his comm at a minimum the team one has to be very careful we've seen that when players get a ton of eco or just a second or even third base and essentially that's the game you just got to wait for it to actually materialize that that was the game but killing off a player can be very dangerous especially with this amount of players in the game and that kind of goes both ways burst both for low player counts and high player counts where if you have six players and half of them are killed off before 20 minutes, then possibly one player has access to four players' ecos, including himself. So that's a ton of, ton of eco to have before 20 minutes. The opposite could be true of in a very tight game like this where it's 4v4, 99%, you know, it's a ladder match. If you just have one player, the higher rated player, or highest or whatever the uh, rating might be, gets a ton of eco just instantly because a player dies, it really ratchets up that side of the map or his eco or going for a nuke or whatever the case may be. So again, killing off the comm isn't always the best scenario, but again, that is the downside with full share slash partial share. Partial share isn't as bad because at least the units die, but the structure still remains. So it's again kind of a 
hit or miss. It, most of the time it is full share, and I think that's where the, where the game does shine the most. But there is something to be said about I kill a player, all of his stuff dies. No one gets it. You can go reclaim it. That's fine. We don't just instantly get all that income immediately. And again, like I said, there is things to be said on both sides of that argument. T2 airs online queue for friendly mander. Love to see that because you, as a naval player, you need your own air. Even if it's just a squadron, that being 12 or so torp bombers, something is, of course, better than nothing, as we say here at on the channel. You gotta have something. Something in the coffers is better than nothing. The bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I think that's how that phrase goes. Something like that. Something my mom says. It's just uh, guarantees versus uh, hypotheticals, I guess, is essentially the the argument there. But we do see a decent amount of T2 boats being pumped out here by Team 2's player of How Bad Tech. And he's going to go for T3. Not yet. He's uh, getting some more destroyers online. Wants to bolster his defensive capabilities. Does have a couple of T1 torp launchers, which isn't terrible. They're not great. I don't like torp launchers. They're only used in emergency situations, not for actual defense, unless you're dealing with harms. Those are different. And yet, yeah, they are torp launching, uh, you know, defenses, but they are very different. They fire very, very quickly, do a ton of damage, and they're a little more annoying to deal with. And they sit, you know, below the surface of the water, so they're not easily targetable because you have you essentially have to ground fire them, or you have to use units that fire torps whether that be subs or destroyers i think some battleships do it too and maybe the neptune the uef neptune doesn't we will probably see at least a few neptunes due to the fact that there are three uef players if i don't see a neptune i will be definitely disappointed but we do see siren players on team one maybe we'll, we'll see harms 16 minutes on the clock here essentially it's about even i'd say between both the players in terms of the eco Team 2 is falling behind Team 1 at, uh, I'd say, about 600 versus Team 1 630, which isn't a ton, but it does make a difference as the game continues to go on. We do see a nice little almost squadron of Janus over here to the west. wonder what they're going after. ASF's moving into intercept. There's a couple of transports that go, nope, no, 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 not going to do it. Are those Sparkies on board? No, those are amphibious tanks. Those are the, the Riptides. I mean, you could have easily just gone over here with the units, but maybe he wanted to drop them in the back line and then move around. The ASF staying very close to this fleet on the west here for Team 1's banana smoothie. Trice knows that, you know, there's something's going on over there, and he doesn't like it, so he's going to send us ASF. In terms of ASFs between Team 1 and Team 2, I feel like Trice has a little bit more than Team 2. He's at 26. Hybrid is at... Yeah, 19, not super far behind, about half a squadron. Isn't too bad. If some AA he's fighting underneath is his. That might be the difference between victory and defeat. But, I mean, it's only when we're talking about 50, 60, 70, you know, 200 that it really obviously makes a huge difference. If you have, you know, 30 versus 20, it's, you want, you might have, you might win with 20, with, with 30, but is it really worth it? Because you lose maybe 18, you lose more than half. And maybe you can use a bomber for a minute or so, but that's really about it. So it's really the late stages where ASF counts really, really matter. Obviously, if you have 300 and your opponent has 50, obviously you're going to win that fight. But you obviously you got to count for AA and whether it be flag or T3 or whatever the case may be. Got to watch out for it. We do see fights constantly kind of happening. A little bit of skirmish. Will they? Won't they? They're in the east. And this is a will day in the middle. Aeon Destroyers versus Cyber Destroyers and Frigates. Of course, the Aeon Destroyers can miss their targets a lot more because they're projectile and fire a little bit slowly. A slow, it's not slow, it's slowly slower than the Cyber ones, but I think the damage comes out to be in terms of per shot. If each shot lands, both for the Cyber and for the Aeon, the Aeon, I think, beat them out just slightly. Make sure we can. Let me look at them. Uh, I think that'd be the electron. That's the AA direct fire weapon. Let's see, 230 DPS. And the uh, what's in the dice? That's not helpful. And this one is 212. So they do do actually they do a little less damage. Apologies, I thought it was the other way around. But I, but it's definitely the individual shots versus 
is really what it is versus the DPS because DPS is every shot hits every time. And if the Aeon misses, it's a lot more painful than if the Cybern one misses because each shot is less in terms of, you know, damage. But overall, they fire more. And if each shot hit hits, they will end up doing more damage. This is a whole fire rate versus damage per shot uh, debate or kind of discussion. It's the same thing with Percy versus Bricks. It's the same thing, just with naval units. And the fleet here from Team 2's Hannibal falling back. I know it's kind of hard to see his units in particular just because it's a very similar color to the, the water versus the, the shade that he has been given slash chosen to be. So I do apologize if it makes it a little bit difficult to see that. But everything else should be perfectly easy to see. Yeah, it's red on blue, orange on blue, tan on blue, dark blue. Yeah, it's not as bad. It's a little bit when it's kind of in the middle a little bit, not as bad. Obviously, the tropical ocean blue and the purple is very easily discernible. And we're approaching the 20-minute stage of the game. Team 1 at 7. Mass income team two at 800. Looks like team two has jumped up in the charts. Could have been wrong about that earlier, but I feel like team one was in the lead. Let me know down in the comments who you think is going to currently win the game. No one died before 20 minutes. Been a nice couple of runs where no one's died. I know yesterday's the Settings game, no one died before 20 minutes. I think no one died before 30 either. I don't know if we'll make it to 30. This game does last a tiny, tiny bit over an hour, so plenty of time for our players to survive or die depending on how the game ends for them let me know again down in the comments how you felt about the game going so far and who is going to win or lose and why please if you haven't done so already like the video subscribe to the channel and of course if you haven't done so already share this video with anyone everyone and especially your pets and now we see the cyber player of team ones the friendly mander going for the torpedo upgrade on board wants to be aggressive with that commander and in this game or at least in this map in particular Water is where it's at, which means that Torp launcher might be valuable. Maybe it won't. We do see some Gwaler heavy gunships online here for him, trying to help his teammate up right in the air game with at least some gunships. Well, this will force back, force back the remaining members of the fleet here from Team 2's house pass tech. Does he have T3 in Navy? Nope, still pumping out destroyers. Team 1 still isn't going for destroyer or for T3 as of yet. T3, nope, for the orange player of Derp, not Trith, because his comm says Trith. Uh, that's the one unit I wish you could not name or rename is your comm. Makes it very confusing, very annoying to deal with. We see in the west a bunch of T1 frigates versus a T1 frigate fleet, plus a couple of destroyers for Team 1 and a couple of Yasao T3 sub hunters. So that fleet not going to go anywhere here for Team 2. But they do have a nice Neptune online. Love to see it. Long range cannon will force back all of those units very, very quickly here. The uh, the Neptune class battle cruiser essentially stole technology. And as, as, as I think about it in my head, they stole technology from the Seraphim and just slapped it to a, a couple of dual cannons and said, no, nah, this is fine. That'll be our next uh, naval unit. It's just a bunch of laser cannons, which worked very, very effectively, I might add. And he also has some tactical missile defense and torque defense. And, of course, sonar and radar. So very, very... And has his own torpedoes as well. So essentially it's like a T3 battleship mixed with a T2 Seraphim destroyer. Those two had a baby, and that's what popped out. We have some T1 bombers over the... Actually, T2 bombers, excuse me, over the top. Some storks delivering some babies in the form of torpedoes to their lovely new owners of the Seraphim faction commanded by Banana Smoothie. This Neptune is getting chewed up though by T1, T2, and T3 units. I think most of the T3 are dead. There's a Yasna still alive. They're fairly weak for a tier 3 unit. We do see 25,000 on board the Neptune, but the Neptune pulling those forces away from the main line, which means the, in the mass will be closer to Team 2's doorstep instead of Team 1's. That might have been just a byproduct, but it does uh, come as a byproduct of when you pull the fight closer to you, getting the reclaim is a lot easier. But we do see combined forces here from Team 1's Derp, Trith, and Friendly going after a couple of those bomb bombers, those destroyers, with some bombers and uh, naval units. Those look like the Yasals have retreated. Is he... No, yeah, he's submerged. Okay, Yasals can... Uh, emerge and submerge into the water back and forth. 
You do see a mobile T2 sonar platform just kind of giving some nice intel here for the western side of Team 1's well, front line. We do see in the east, Team 2 Tenor below mixing in some pseudo-naval units, those riptides, those hover tanks with his own destroyers. Do we see a nice little Neptune as of yet? No, T2 is still the main stage contender here for this side of the map. ARAS has started here for Tri, trying to scale up his eco. And that force in the east will continue to hold. Trith does have... Sorry, not Trith. Derp, see, I did it. I knew I would do it. Derp does have the torpedo on board and nano. Definitely a good combo to have in the Navy because if he gets pretty close to naval units, it's going to hurt. Those torpedoes can fire very, very quickly on board some of those, whether it be sub hunters or just the T1 subs can really just eradicate a comm if he's not careful. Attack in the middle once again here against those Crimson Red or Chevy Crimson and the Royal Blue colors. There's a nice little Infinity class that's hang kind of hanging out where it shouldn't be. Should be back behind the Destroyers, but it looks like there are more Destroyers here for Team 2, which means this amount of force isn't going to be enough to repel this attack. We might start continuing... Considering some T3 harms, maybe going T3 in general. He is producing a decent amount of torp bombers, so that will be his defense. But Team 2 is trying to counter that with some anti-air cruisers, so I don't know if that's going to work long term. The battle cruiser is still online here for camp, and has he built a second one? No. At least not that I can tell. He's built the Summit class battleship. These things are massive. Just shell emplacements constantly those triple those three triple cannons are just devastating for HP on anything doesn't matter if it's an experimental or for a ground structure just it hurts it hurts to be hit by those does team 2 have any other tricks up their sleeve nice air grid being built here by hybrid really pumping those ASFs out I don't see any sort of other maybe nukes or any of that sort of thing. It's only 25 minutes, so that's not probably on their minds as of yet. But at least the idea of how do we win the game versus how do we survive, and it definitely needs to be on both teams' minds, not just the one in the lead or the one in the uh, just trailing them. In terms of mass income, Team 2 is slightly ahead of Team 1, but Team 1's caught up and pretty much stayed mostly lockstep with Team 2. And vice versa, it's been Team 1 in the lead, then Team 2 in the lead, so... Kind of back and forth. The ASF's flooding the skies here while the bombers are inbound to assist with dealing with said cruisers. But unfortunately, it's just the AA is too powerful for those cruisers or for the actually bombers to really do a lot. We do see Friendly Mander pumping out those torpedoes from his comm. He's doing a decent amount of damage, but now his T2 naval facility is done and dusted. Getting some assistance from Trith for some T3 Yasaos. Definitely will assist in defensive measures in that regard. But the damage, I think, is done for the time being. Going for some P-Gens back here. Oh, that would be devastating here for Team 1's player of Mander if he loses that T3 P-Gen. You need a ton of energy when you build naval units, and losing that thing would definitely hurt. The long game for him, at least for now. Destroyer fires once again. Is it going to be enough? One more will do it. Oh, the shot is not released in time. Frigate comes in. Will that? No. That T3 Pigeon lives to fight another day or at least survive for another day. And the fleet of bombers are inbound to the west. Going to be built up the ASF's flying cover. Going after the bombers here from Team 2's camp. And some of those actually land on land. So that's got to hurt the Frigate there is still. Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. There are two Neptunes online and a battleship. I'd love to see that combo. Bulwarks. We have AA in the form of cruisers with the missiles on board as well. Don't see any destroyers, at least that I can tell. Mainly just frigates. And the I see some Coopers as well. So everything except destroyers, it looks like, in this mix. Oh, look, and it's a uh, donor platform. ASF's come in here from Team 2. Go for the air fight. And looks like Team 2's air play of hybrid will win it. And there's a ton of torp bombers going after... I don't know what they're going... Well, maybe they're going after the weakened Neptune. That's a ton of bombers just ripped out of the sky before they could launch their torp bombs. That just... Ooh. 
That's got to hurt. That's a decent amount of mass to reclaim currently still on the map, especially on that western side. But for totals, it is 100,000 mass on the map with, I'd say, 80% of it being in the northwest section of this corner or court court quadrant. Ah, there it is, north, northwest quadrant. That's the word I was looking for. But we do see Team 2 reemerging with their really built fleet once again. But Team 1's tried pumping out some... Yasos for defensive measures, and now he's getting into the naval game, which will eat away a little bit at his mass income for building more ASF producing facilities and the like. But he's trying to hold off some bleeding that he feels like is definitely warranted, especially on this western side where there's a lot of purple building up here from Camp, and Camp is just slowly eating away at Team One's front line here for Banana Smoothie. He's being targeted by, I mean, a pretty decent naval player given the fact just this formation you know not formation but more just uh, the amount of variety of units there's everything except the destroyer and t1 sub i think is the only other one that i don't see yeah, i don't see only oh, yeah, there's the bulwark yeah i see everything except the t2 right yeah t2 destroyer and the t1 sub but everything else is you know essentially every the fleet besides the atlantis I don't count that because it is an experimental and it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's part of the naval side of things, but it's also an experimental. Speaking of which, Hybrid, I think, builds the first one of the game. He is UEF and it's probably not a fat boy. Yep, there it is. It is an Atlantis, speaking of which. That'll be huge for this eastern side where Team 1 is pushing back. Team 2, Hannibalo is brought back to essentially the same point that his mirror of Banana Smoothie is. He's still at T2, pumping out T1 frigates, trying to hold off the bleeding. ASFs and bombers coming in to assist all the time. But even with no cruisers or hardly any cruisers in the mix, those bombers getting ripped to shreds by all that AA on board, those destroyers and frigates. And then the cruisers move in. It's really going to make that a pain to deal with. Team 2 starting to lose the eastern side, while Team 1 starts to lose the western side. But the, the caveat is, can Team 1 hold or can Team 2 hold? Because we could see just a very similar thing that happens in Sentence where one team gains the Southern Pond, one team gains the Northern Pond. And it's kind of a flip-flop of where players are building their main uh, manufacturing bases. And that's pretty much what's happening here, except not because, I mean, a fleet can get essentially anywhere on the map. There's nowhere that's hidden besides maybe this rear, rear corner. Oh, look, there's a nice little... No hole up there that a comm can hide in. Wouldn't be surprised if a comm does hide in there. But uh, essentially, any naval unit can essentially get to most of the bases here, especially T2 and up. But realistically, what it comes down to is taking out as much of the naval production as you can and holding out. T2 Navy is starting to fall here for Hannibal. He doesn't have a lot of forces left. More bombers are inbound, and the Atlantis is coming in to try to save the day. Hasn't submerged as of yet. But is trying to do his best to assist. The Amethyst Purple player of camp has delivered the killing blow to the naval side of things here for Team 1's Banana Smoothie. There's a couple of facilities up there, but they're not the T3 variety. Neptune's zoning in on Banana Smoothie's comm. And at 31 minutes, the first casualty of the game is Banana Smoothie by camp. It will be a 4v3. And at the almost exact same moment, Team 2 loses Hannibal O to Derp. That's not Trith. It is dirt, even though it says trite right there. It is a 3v3. I was about to announce it at 4v3, but it's a 3v3. That Atlantis needs to sink underneath the surface of the water. There is some good AA on board at that experimental submarine, but you can see it. There it goes. It is diving into the depths. It's taking a ton of damage here from those destroyers. Destroyers can still attack the ground, you know, uh, ground fire for the most part, but the AOE spread isn't that. Or the AOE. Uh, not spread, but that's the word I'm looking for. The When the shot lands, it has like a spread where it doesn't AoE damage. The AoE isn't really great or wide. Ah, that's what I'm looking for for the destroyers. And now the ASF, not ASF, the bombers come in and just rip the shreds of all those destroyers. This will get gifted over to Hybrid. We'll gain a little bit more mass income to fight off the eastern attack from Derp. Same thing here for Trith. We'll gain everything in the west here. But this base is essentially demolished, and with a couple of T2 Riptides on station, those mixes are going to fall very, very quickly, especially with that artillery from the summits raining in and the cruiser fire as well. That also doesn't help with situations like this. 
going a little bit slower here for Team 1. Of course, the Atlantis is taking a beating. Sub almost 5,000 hit points is in the deep red for him. There is a summit coming in, but there's a lot of destroyers that can easily swarm this summit if he's not careful. But the Neptune has been built, so that will definitely dissuade more destroyers from coming in. There aren't, a com there aren't that many due to the, just the bombardments constantly from these storks, these T2 tort bombers. And a lot of the cruisers have taken a ton of fire. A couple of them, three-star veterancy, uh, no four-stars yet, but they're just getting ripped to shreds now. And there's really not a lot of steam coming out of Team 1. I mean, there's a bunch of spam and a couple of destroyers and cruisers and all that, but they're all back here just constantly. Look at this. Look at all this just constantly being thrown on this eastern side. The summit is in range, and we'll start opening fire on all the battleships. The only thing that Team 1 can do is essentially just bob and weave, bob and weave. Once that Neptune gets there, that's over. We even see some frigates and another t Neptune coming online here. Might be donated, I would assume, to hybrid to micromanage that eastern side a lot better. But look at the fleet just coming in. We see the same thing again in the north. Tons of Yasao being employed to try to deter this incoming fleet here from camp. Multiple summits are coming into range of vital structures here for Team 1's, the, man the, the Mander, whether it's the friendly one or the code one, depending on how you want to... Uh, identify him as but an omen class battleship versus a galaxy class battleship did you see the omen can fire you know a decent amount uh, of shots but we do see very similar the galaxy has those tri cannons there's only two of them on this one the summit has three but uh, i feel like aesthetically i like the seraphim naval side of things probably the best it's just i don't know what it is maybe it's just the design kind of partial to the Awasa bomber if you're not familiar if you're not aware it you know, whenever I hear one I go oh where is it where is it kind of thing so uh I hope to see one of those this would actually that would actually be really nice for team one if they could build one of those Awasa bombers but uh I don't know if they're going to and it's a ton of AA to chew through and there's multiple summits online and bulwarks and all the like it would really be a pain to chew through all those hit points but the artillery reining in to assist this attack from Team 2's Owlbass Tech up the middle. Those summits, again, have nice range on them. Things do go down. At least I heard one. At least it looks like one, honestly. We do see the units have been gifted over. But multiple Neptunes now online. Forcing back this mainly T2 fleet. Team 1's player of Derp needs to get to the T3 stage. And he has getting into those galaxy classes. Does have a plan B online. Very interestingly. So he has a second one as well. Planning for the long game. And his fleet actually diverting to go into the main production facilities for Halbass Tech. Going after the T3 Naval Headquarters. But there's an Omen nearby. Actually a second one as well. And just ripping apart all those frigates. Many of the frigates are probably targeting the uh, engineers deal with the uh, assist going on with that but there's another uh, omen coming off the line here pretty shortly and honestly this attack I do love the strategy of going after something over here just to distract but uh, I mean they're being pushed back by multiple Neptunes they have the range they have the DPS Neptune sitting there also doesn't help the situation but you can just see just ripping those uh, Salem's to shreds here I haven't seen Salem's walk on land yet this game but I mean, I would kind of would be surprised to not see them walk on land. There's two Cybrans on Team 1. Minus we'll have them walk on land at some point. But it looks like Team 2's fleet of camp kind of splitting up a little bit more than they probably should. Yeah, they're engaging battleships down here from Team 1's Mander. But it's also receiving a ton of fire from these Yasaos in the east. They need to decide where they want to put their efforts and soon kind of solidify their front line or at least their forces and move on one front. I think they easily could just divert from going after Trite's forces going south across the front of Team 1's Mander's base, taking out the T3 Naval Headquarters. But there is already artillery focused on that position. We'll take it out right there. There it goes. You can easily just wipe on and actually come in and come in from behind and try to take out the supply lines and the fleet inbound from Derp and essentially just gobble up everything on this eastern side i get wanting to push into the back line i do but i mean you're being stopped pretty heavily by team one spam and some yes so probably should divert forces elsewhere 
which he has been doing a little bit down south to assist, but probably should do that hook maneuver that I mentioned. We do see is Team 1 going for any sort of... Yep, there is a nuke, and it is half-loaded, so they are thinking about ending the game here pretty soon. We don't see anything else. Nothing on that. Nothing's going to be built on that side island. Well, not side main island, but it's in the enemy territory, essentially. Team 2 doesn't have anything else on the books as of yet. Just spamming out naval fleets, T3, T2 bombers, that sort of thing. We do see a nice little Riptide getting onto land. Getting an engineer kill. It's a couple of both who's online. We do see that fleet that was inbound probably over here at Circle North and just surround Team 1's Mander. Mander going for that Team 3 naval facility once again. Probably should just cut his losses, build it back here so it's protected. But wants to have it on the front line so it can deploy a lot easier. But the Omens are just ripping through it. Probably should have just cut his losses and go somewhere else and now that fleet that could have easily engaged with the fleet from Halbastek being forced back by that army uh, sorry, that flotilla of those Yassau's multiple summits could come into range some of them just sitting back here being shot up by frigates definitely could come and assist the omens more omens are coming in all the time of course haven't seen any of the missile ships yet uh, that might be an aircraft carrier I don't know we'll see I think it is I think it is. Hold on. Yeah, that's an aircraft carrier. I can see the control bridge or the command bridge, or the air, or the air, the command the air com air traffic control tower. That's what I was looking for. Words, words are hard, my friends. Words are hard. But we do see the Omen going after land targets now, going after the artillery shooting at it from the land. We do see, of course, friendly Mander is in the yellow, is taking some hit points, but he's at 106. Three star veterancy and torpedo with nano, so he should be fine for a little bit. He walks on the line, he's dead. So he is stuck in the water. That's essentially what happened to uh, Hannibal almost earlier on as he went in the water and went, that's nah, probably not a good idea, man, back. But the wave of torpedo bombers are inbound, and they are inbound, and they are coming for those diving player in the east. Just flood the skies. Don't stop dropping those torp bombers. Sorry, torp bombers. Torp bombs. And that fleet has been reduced to a couple of Othams. Still T2 Navy, still upgrading the T3. Field trying to stave off any sort of shots against the Omni or the Artillery. The Pigeon's definitely the target. They're going after the T2 Artillery. The other Omen is down. There's only one more remaining. And that's a lot of mass for Team 1 to scoop up right on their doorsteps. Rather it be theirs or Team 2's. Multiple summits are down for Team 2 as well. It's just Team 2, they had a huge thing going. But Team 1 was just able to just say, no, we're good. We don't need any more business. Sorry, by 270,000 mass, most of it residing on the northeastern quadrant, specifically around the main island of the Code Mander or the Friendly Mander, depending on, again, of course, which name you decide to go with. But that little Omen class is, uh, I say it little, but it's not really Omen. Nuke is launched. Where is it going? Going for the main production facility of Team 2's player of How Bass Tech. And this could be the resurgence that Team 2 needs. They're getting an SMB online a little too late in that regard. And that is going to hurt. First nuke of the game will land. This is a hidden SMB I don't see, which it doesn't look like there is. Team 2 probably will actually lose How Bass Tech in this engagement if he doesn't move. You see a nice little small fighting force of frigates that are the northwest for Trith. We see some stingers. Stingers aren't great. I mean, they're better than nothing, but they're not great. Here comes the nuke. The comm is moving. The aircraft carrier gets made and is trying to get out of range. There it goes. Gets EMP, but he's fine. And, of course, kaboom. T3 Naval Headquarters is done and dusted. But beneficially for Team 2, the SMD that was just built is still online and is currently loaded. It's being e it's amped for a little little bit, EMP, but uh, there it goes. It's going to reload once again. So unfortunately for them, at least that stays online, but the production severely slows down. And now we see the combined fleets of both Trith and Code Amander forcing their way down Camp's throat once again. Multiple Neptunes and Summits just being surrounded. Nuke launching once again. This is actually outbound from, I assume, Team 
one once again. Oh, it's actually in the rear. There's a secondary nuke launcher. And the Awasa bomber is going to be built. Look at that. That's exactly what I wanted. Sea Framer from Trite. ASF's coming and take out all the bombers here from camp. And they're just going to run over all those T3 units. There are a couple of Neptunes which are being focused down by the frigates and destroyers here. Take out the units that can do a ton of damage really quickly to lesser teched up units. And go from there. The nuke is going to sail over that SMD. Unfortunately for Team 1, there is... Oh, no! There, the SMD isn't loaded. I knew it was built a while ago, but I didn't realize it wasn't even loaded. Ooh. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Team 2 is going to lose a second T3 land air... Not air. They're going to lose a T3 air headquarters. They won't lose the Navy, I guess. Lose part of the, uh, the air grid. There it goes. Kaboom! Takes out the SMD. Takes out the headquarters and most of that ad air grid team two does have a air grid of course with the main air player of hybrid he has his own nuke so in a game with a bunch of water everyone's decided to go for nukes hmm. that's not unlike uh supreme commander you know you have all this territory and you decide to just uh, go for artillery or yolos or whatever that's part of the game i get it uh, nukes aren't as bad because it's, well, you could build them on boats, you could build the, you could counter them kind of easily with SMDs. It's not a huge, like, oh, now I have to spend all this energy and time and build up a bunch of shields to deal with artillery. And it's, oh, a couple SMD and call it a day. But that, that summon is just feeling the pain from those T2 tour bombers. And now they're going to target the next one in line. But now, again, like I said, Team 1 is being forced back on this eastern side. This plan B has taken some damage, is fine for now, but has taken some damage. Like how this Neptune's trying to hide in this little cove, but it's too big to fit in the cove. And it's going after all the spam facilities. Nuke launching once again. This time it's outbound from Team 2. Where is it going? It's going for this position against Friendly Mander. There's nothing here to defend against it, and he knows it. And is getting out of dodge just in case he doesn't get... Tar and just in case he is the one targeted, which he is, but in case he wasn't, he wants to be sure. I don't blame him in that regard. Awasaw Bomber is online. SMD over here protecting the nuke is online, as well as this one is online. Dual SMD in the back. And Neptune's forcing their way forward. Another one gets killed off by those battleships, but multiple, just so many Neptunes. And you can see just the damage output. Forcing back Galaxy Class battleships, units with almost double their HP pools. Just forcing their way forward and kaboom! Kills off that main base here for the Code Mander. And that Neptune receives some fire to the face from that Awasa bomber. Team 2, if they didn't know about it now, they know about it now if they're paying attention. The ASF count is, uh, no, it's over here. They're hiding over here to this island. Let's see, 194, so call it 200. Try. You have 200, so it's essentially even with actually a decent amount of Volthus, to be fair. A decent amount of Volthus, but there it goes. going to land. Not the best placement. Could have been a little bit further back, but Neptune's just ripping apart those facilities. And you can see the Neptune just fully shining in this game. Aircraft carrier coming in close with its AA to protect. T3 Navy back online. SMD is being loaded, and it has loaded. And then Awasa, where is it again? There it is. Going to go after those Neptunes. That's a betterly placed bomb. There it goes. Takes out all that support around those Neptunes. But the AA now coming into range. Trying to hover bomb. Let's see. Does it get it off in time? Yes, it does. There it goes. Lands right in the middle of that formation. Takes out more hit points. Almost kills off two more Neptunes. Galaxy trying to shield against this uh, incursion from those Neptunes. But just the facilities are being ripped to shreds. Friendly Mander still alive and kicking at five-star veterancy. Killed off 10,000 mass and climbing. That bomb will land and take out all three of those Neptunes. Oh, that one was going to die anyway. Those two died off. The Omen stays out just a little bit, but still that Galaxy Class will die. And that Awasa Bomber has taken hits. Hasn't even crossed one veterancy yet. Those Neptunes and summits that have pushed on the eastern side have either fallen back or been killed off. The, that, and that is the downside with the Neptunes is they just don't have the range to fight against battleships. They have to get in closer, which gives the battleship an advantage. But we do see the Torp launcher just constantly throwing out those Torp 
torpe torp bombers, torpedoes, if I can say torps correctly. I think I say torps too much, and I just don't know how to say torpedoes anymore. And then after I'm getting a bunch of veterans, he just gets <laughs> killing off a bunch of frigates. But the bomb will land once again in the middle of all those Neptunes. There it goes. Oh, kaboom. Takes out one of them and more hit points on the others. It's still in the yellow. It's at one star of veterancy now. And the last T3 Galaxy class uh, battleship has been destroyed for Team 1's friendly Mander. Trying to surround and poke and prod at this omen. But it is just being ripped to shreds. Now, there are some Barracudas here to assist. And are dealing some decent damage to it, but... Not doing as much as they probably want. Bomb will land. That's going to be a nice place. And taking out a bunch of those Coopers. Ooh, there they all go. They all went up in smoke. AA now coming online here for Team 2. And actually a couple of flak and stationary T3. You can't build PD, but you can build AA on the water. Because that makes sense. I know there's Torf launchers and they do exactly the same thing. But I feel like T3 Ravagers on water would be nuts and UEF players would just do that all day, especially with these naval units. I mean, they move further size and mass costs. They move decently fast, but just when it's the large engagements with just a ton of units just kind of running into one another, those Ravagers would just be deadly. Oh, and giving Seraphim front lines a bunch of Awasa direct fire, you know, direct laser weaponry, essentially just a Seraphim destroyer, but it's stationary. That's also a nice thing for them, but that's probably why PD is not buildable on slash in water. And the resurgence in the east here for Team 1's Derp. And any sort of game ender plays. Satellite starting to be built here by Team 2. Nuke is loaded, so he has that available. SMD is almost loaded. Secondary SMD is on the front line, though, for Team 2, so that's fine. Team 1, you building anything sort of uh, spicy? S uh, not SMD. Nuke being heavily assisted by both players. I don't see any artillery. I don't see any YOLOs. I don't see any of the the bigger ticket items that we customarily see in this game. But, you know, sometimes it's nice to not have those and focus more on strategy and unit comps and that sort of thing. Key for class, T3 aircraft carriers aren't really going to be able to fight these units. They can fight air units, but naval units not really the best idea. They have some TMD. And that's about it. And AA, that's that's really sick with the two things. Let's take a look at Reclaim here for both teams. Team 2 at 335, Team 1 at 330. So essentially the same amount of Reclaim for both teams. Both teams focusing on Reclaim quite heavily. Very important element of the game. Units that the other player paid for that you can scoop up and use for whatever you want. Definitely very useful. Does look like the Codemander getting a decent chunk of that. Same with Camper. They've been, you know, the, essentially the main stage attention for multiple fleets. And we do see, speaking of which, Mander's fleet syncing up with Derps. And there's a bunch of Barracudas in here. Team 2 needs a lot of just torpedo defense slash, uh, I mean, shoot all the subs, essentially. Just build more subs. Is essentially the, the lesson here from uh, this game so far is build more subs. And I mean, yeah, you could do that with destroyers with torp defense and their own torpedoes, but look at all of those units just rushing in. Unfortunately, they are coming into range a couple of some Team 1 tides, those torpedo launchers. They don't do, again, a whole lot, but if you focus on the, the subs themselves, they do decent damage. You can see there's not a lot of torpedoes left in terms of those. Uh, Barracudas, there's just frigates. And they're going to be pushed back again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine galaxy on screen currently. And that's a lot of galaxies. More of them to the north. More of them being built all the time. Team 1 pumping a ton of those T3 battleships. We do see Mander going into T3 once again. He can't build his own. Kind of jealous of Derp, but he's going to be able to build that pretty soon. Bomber at 61,000 mass skill, trying to hover bomber, just hang out here with those ASF. Team 2 doesn't want to engage that ASF ball quite yet. 49 minutes on the clock. And again, like I said, I don't see any sort of spicy plays. Nuke launches. This time it's outbound from Team 1's side of the map. It is from the Liberator. Where is this going? It's going for the Navy. 
Throwing for the T3 naval facility that's been built over here. A couple of shields, a couple of TMD. Actually, these are TMLs. There's some Alohas and T3 Mexes, that sort of thing. Omni, this is going to be huge for just knocking out. It's more of like a logistics base and resupply more than anything else. But it's definitely going to just annoy Team 2 at a minimum. At the most, it'll slow down this push, which is definitely what they want. This was not a lot of uh, naval units online once again for Trith. Or for Mander, for that case. There goes the nuke. Takes out the facilities. Take out everything except the one T1 land facility. I mean, there are some engineers already here for hybrid, so he could easily build stuff. But still, losing everything. That's got to hurt. T3 facility still online. A couple of those Strategic summits were disabled for the time being. Nukes just not stopping here between the teams. Second nuke outbound here from Trith, which is right after the first one from his teammate of Derp, which he shred shredded names with for some reason. He's going maybe for just the comm directly or just another T3 naval headquarters, but counter nuke outbound here from Hybrid going into the east. Wants to strike at the fleet, and that will take out at least six summits at a minimum. Oh, and that, oh no, the nuke land short takes out some of those support fleet and an omen and a couple of those T1 factories. It does start to open the door for Team 1, but not really as much as they probably thought. The galaxy are not moving, and this is going to be very bad for that attack power. There it goes, Lance, on top of a galaxy. <laughs> Kaboom! <laughs> you can even see the ball on the bottom. That's why I love the Navy. You can see the nukes a lot better. That has got to hurt. <laughs> Ouch. I think that was five, I think, that were killed off. At, at, at least not at, at the minimum four, if not five. That's a ton of attack power that's just dead. It just no longer exists. Doesn't exist anymore. Nuked at 86,000 mass kill. Actually, that number's going up still, 80, 86.5. The attack's still commencing here from Team 1. Actually, the attack's happening essentially at the same time. It's going to take a, a lot longer for Team 1 to really do sus substantial damage against Team 2 than it will be over here in the west. But they're being pretty much held back here by a couple of Omens, T1 frigates. Are there any artillery in the mix? No? No, it doesn't look like I haven't seen any artillery, just Team 1 PGMs. More facilities are just going to be spammed up for just bullet sponges, essentially. There's a couple of Barracudas over here to the east. Nice little squatter show. But uh, they're going after some T2 mixes. I mean, at this stage, I mean, anything and everything is good to take out. But I mean, Team 1 at 1K, Team 2 at 1.7K, that number, I mean, it's starting to materialize quite well with just Team 2 holding. You can see in the east, Team 2 holding as well. In the north, this is the main battle line. Team 1 wants to prevent Team 2 from breaking through, and they've done a ton of work. More and more summits just lining up that back line. And it's being not as aggressive as probably could be. You probably could send in most of this fleet and call it good and not really focus on it a whole lot. You take out the Yassas very quickly, for sure. I don't think those Yassas, they, they haven't emerged, so they can't use their AA. They do have actually a decent amount of AA on board those subs, but uh, again, the whole hit point thing, you emerge, laser, not good for your uh, skincare regimen, that's for sure. We do see those uh, galaxies nice to be fanned out a little bit. A couple of uh, threes, a two, and a one. Nuke launching from a plan B. It's not as powerful as a land-based nuke, but it is, of course, better than nothing. Going to the west. SMD coverage here from Team 2 is how Bastet can cover everything in the rings. Recovers his uh, E3 naval headquarters. It could be still edged out, but uh, let's see. Does it get uh, shot down? No, it does not. That got edged out as well. A couple of facilities will be taken out. A decent amount of hit points on board. The omens will be gone. But essentially, it's just removing the shield. Stop. It says, you loser. It says, uh, Trith. Hybrid says, happy face. I don't know what he's talking about. I mean, he's spamming T1AA. Wasa says, oh, Wasa says no. <laughs> I don't know if he's referring to... Uh, camp or for hybrid hybrid is the one responding i don't even see the uh, oh there it is over here oh yeah they're just riptides over here hanging out oh <laughs> going after the asf 
That's never a good feeling when a ground unit takes out an air unit like that, especially when they're not designed for that. That's always got to hurt. 67,000 mass killed. Going to fly over some AA. Definitely not the best position to be in. Does have two star veterans here, though. We'll survive a little bit longer than normal. But now it dropped below 50%. Drops a bomb on its way out. We'll kill off probably that Neptune right there. There it goes. There is the Hathum, the T3 battleship capable of nukes. Yeah, I just I don't know what it is. I love kind of the arrowhead design. It's kind of spaced out a little bit. I love the like floating kind of bits that are still together but not together kind of thing. I do like that design. I was uh, definitely a good uh, you know, visual representation of just parts that do not touch one another but somehow they work. So, well, for the uh, I'd say for the most part they touch. It looks like. Oh, nice, nice uh, explosion in the background going after that summit. But, uh, yeah, I always thought the center part was floating, but I guess not. But it, l it does look like it, you know, it's kind of, quote, floating with it. So I do like that. Also, it's asymmetrical. I don't know what it is, but I feel like asymmetrical designs, not that they look better. They're just more interesting. I mean, yeah, you can build something symmetrical and it can look good. I feel like the asymmetrical designs definitely give it something a little more like oomph in the design. Kind of like the the Millennium Falcon's a good example of it is symmetrical except for the cockpit where and a couple of other details on the top. Everything it's like you cut it down straight the middle looks like the exact same, but uh, the cockpit makes it a little it makes it not symmetrical makes the design a little bit more uh, not unique but like hey you know, it's not just the cookie cutter thing it looks a little different. Storks are inbound. That's a lot of storks delivering babies to their new owners. Both is going after summits. Love to see that. They don't last very long. Don't have a lot of hit points, but they definitely are very much worth it. They're definitely better than the Stingers, that's for sure. And those Torp Bombers going after the T3 Naval Headquarters. That doesn't get anywhere. 55 minutes on the clock. Team 1 losing a lot of steam here. They are breaking through, but it's taking them a while. And there's multiple summits just hanging out with just a bunch of Team 1 spam in terms of Torps and AA. Nuke launch once again. Where to go? Oh, it's over here from Derp. Derp's going to launch in, in top of all those summits. That's going to hurt. Looks like did he, did he plan it correctly? Yes, he did for the most part. A couple of them will be, a couple of these Neptunes will be singed. There one goes, and that's essentially the main thing that team want, team two loses in that fleet is just one Neptune, which honestly isn't a lot. We have Codemander's base just kind of regulated to this northeastern side of the island. He's spamming up his own facilities. Omen's trying to just you know, rip on through them. Galaxy Online once again here for him, producing more over here to the east and the west. It's just the war of attrition here between team two and team one, and which one will give out sooner and we see the Hothum just being ripped to shreds by that battleship in the distance there it goes it is dead in the water quite literally and torpedoes going after summits once again going through the shield that was uh being generated by that bulwark takes out a decent amount of hit points on board the summit drops it down to 12,000 hit points aa comes in behind would love to see more cruisers in the mix but uh again the aa is definitely Better than nothing. We have a Summit Brothers shielding this central summit here. Well, actually would have died if it wasn't for that uh, summit coming in to save it. But uh, I don't think it'll get saved for a second time as the bombers are approaching from a nice clear vector. Oh, and there it goes. There goes this. Oh, Summit's 5,000 hit points. Looks like the AA was just enough to keep most of those bombers away but a detachment of summits have diverted themselves to the north i was uh, coming in it's the same one as before it's still alive sub 10,000 hit points does uh land its bomb in the middle of well nothing and will it fly off screen no sub a thousand hit points there it goes it's gonna land on team one's island at least that's what they owned at recent uh, uh, originally and there are already engineers moving in to scoop up all the reclaim on that island. Summits are engaging the main base here for Trith. 56 minutes on the clock. Some of them are in range of that main air grid. And all it's going to take is just a couple of pigeons to go down. And that cascade will occur. Nuke needs to launch and take out the rest of these summits. They're just going to sit here and just fire on that base. 
Might as well just take the clear shot and go for it. We have units breaking that front line here for Code Mander getting into the T3 Naval Headquarters once again. In the east still looks like momentum. There is still momentum here for Derp pushing back Team 2. But uh, again, it's the whole there's a ton of stuff to get through and it's going to take a while. It looks like the attack's just going to go for it. Not even going to stop. I can't even see the movement lines just because of the color rising of the map but is that the nuke from team two yes it is it's going for something don't know what it is and uh, asf's just sitting in the shields in the east the shields are actually down and the satellite over top if it doesn't go for the emitters what is it actually this the shields are on it's just hard to tell as i stated earlier just the shields blend into the environment even the like blue ones i think the only ones i can realistically see easy are the aeon ones this one I can see because it's a little bit kind of a shade of like whitish blue, and uh, the ones up north they're 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 more blue. The other ones are you may have they're more white, but uh, these ones are hard to tell. They 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 definitely have a darker shade of blue, so they definitely mix into the environment a lot more. But there goes the summits just charging into the main base, and the either con the bomb or sorry the nuke lands takes out the air grid at least most of it here for trite that will kick him out of the air game at least in terms of producing we have neptunes and summits moving in to take out the backline facilities the shields are falling the emitters are targeted great move here by hybrid and forcing his way and taking out the shielding and now it doesn't even matter take out the smd nuke is launched it's going after the navy should have went after it sooner but unfortunately it's just too late. Half more the half the air grid is down. ASF move out of range. They don't get blown up in their own nuke. Wah wah says Trite. Air close. Wah wah. I don't know what the wah wahs in reference to. Bombers will just be casualties. Two of those T3 units will be taken out. Both of them summits nuking your own base. No, not nuking his own base. Just nuking the units that are in the bay. But. The player of Derp just losing a lot of his infrastructure here. The attack still progressing in the south. Getting into the main facility here. This one actually taken out by the galaxy classes, I would assume. But, uh, I mean, it's still doing a lot of work. Now, you know, just running into some is definitely not the best thing for your health, I would admit. Because it's just, you know, you have a giant cannon essentially right next door. Not the best place to, you know, sit down for a nice cup of tea or a drink, whatever the case may be. We have some Percy's that have actually been either walking or dropped off. I want to hope walking, because that would be very entertaining. But at least dropped at a minimum. And all those bombers targeting those Percy's. The rest of the air grid is done. There it goes. Nothing remains of the air grid. T3 strategic missile launcher. Five star adventure 92,000 mass killed. And at 59 minutes and 51 seconds, it's looking like Team 2 will win this thing. There's the ASF fight I've been looking for all game. Where are they going? Epic stop command says Trite. Oh, no. And that will be a win for the air here for Team 2. They just control K anyways. He's like, that's it. I'm done. He just control Ks. Team 1 just recalls in general. It doesn't even matter. And that will be the game here, folks. At 1 hour, four, sorry, 15 minutes on the clock, Team 2 wins it with zero casualties. Oh, sorry, sorry, one casualty. Sorry, one casualty. I was like, wait, hold on. That doesn't make sense. One casualty, that being the teammate of Hannibal o. Let's go ahead and go over MVPs. I feel like MVP... For this game definitely goes to camp. He did a huge amount of work in pushing this western side constantly. Just pushing, pushing, pushing. Tooking out an entire uh, player's base so that Team 1 couldn't get a lot of the, you know, the income from it. And just kept pushing. Would have liked to see him a little bit more aggressive in terms of that. Probably would have ended the game a little bit sooner. But it did allow a nice distract. Actually, that's an artillery. Is there an artillery I don't know about? Hold on. Mm, under the satellite. Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he he deserves the win. <laughs> he built he built a 
Maver as well. So on top of him just crushing it in the Navy on his side of the map, he builds a Maver just for an insurance policy. Now at that point, yeah, that definitely deserves that uh, that uh, title of MVP for the game. Let me know down in the comments if you felt the same way or not. Please, if you haven't some, done so already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course share this video with anyone, everyone, and especially your pets. And I will see all of you in the next one.